a father who is an engineer uh, sees a son as an engineer and he becomes an engineer father is so happy everybody is happy he gets a job high paid job he gets married then finally after a point of time you see everything is there but i'm not happy the root cause of or the root of a happiness lies in your heart and uh, because you missed your heart for 20 25 years and you see all these big numbers salaries uh, uh, positions uh, you have everything but you're not happy so what what great life is that you are not living a happy life at the end thank you so much for being on the show alex thank you so diving into the show so you have had almost 12 years of corporate experience and if you look into the way you have entered the training and coaching field at the, the point of time the the field was already having like lot of players in, in that particular arena at the point of time so didn't you feel like you are taking a very risky step at that point of time while while you are having a secure job getting into something uncertain what was running in your mind right uh, i think it's a very good question and you are taking me down the memory lane of uh, 2013 and 14 Uh, but i think uh, this all story started much 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 before say way back in uh, 2004 when i started my career so it was all good until 2008 9 and then i shifted few jobs and uh, probably market was also very different then i uh, at one point i realized to one thing uh, most of the time the motivation is related to or uh, find i could find motivation only for a promotion or a salary high but is there anything beyond that that's how i found that my real passion lies in training and coaching people uh, so it's almost a six year uh, study uh, research uh, experiments uh, training okay. all these things actually led to uh, shifting or uh, quitting a job in 2014 mm-hmm. uh, to uh, to be honest i'm not really worried about how many players are in the market yes there are so many players in the market there are so many soft skill trainers there are so many business coaches there are so many behavioral trainers Uh, but i think what really makes a difference is if you are sure about what you are going to do and you have a vision you have a plan and you enjoy doing it i think then you need to focus on what you want to do and then all these things uh, won't make a big difference so when did you start learning all these things the nlp and all these techniques and coming to all these things how did when did you how did you find out time to learn all this things? right right so uh, way back in 2003 uh, i somehow uh, stumbled upon this concept of uh, nlp okay. until that day uh, i didn't know that i i always i liked uh, nlp or anything related to psychology but after hearing all these interesting and uh, concepts i somehow found that okay psychology is very close to my heart so my first experience uh, with nlp was in 2003 but uh, that was just a course i didn't take it very seriously but it was there in the back of my mind for a long time so somewhere in 2008 i kind of studied a little bit 2009 a little bit but 2011 uh, 12 time i actually took a few courses uh, uh, so that i can understand this nlp in depth and i attended so many different programs after that so now after 3 4 5 years and doing a lot of training programs uh, i realize uh, nlp or any other course what you are talking is about a part of psychology right. it is all about human beings and the mind so were you able like how were you able to handle the time constraints at that point of time you were still working on your job right at that point of time till 2014 i think answer is very simple uh, tomorrow you have an exam and uh, <laughs> uh, you have a good movie releasing won't you find time for watching the movie i am sure most of you will find it somehow right mm. i think that's it so once your uh, mind or your soul or your passion is identified mm. uh, with a particular thing i think you naturally get tuned to what you want to do Uh, so i think that's simple uh, yeah so it's about uh, everybody has 24 hours mm. so it's about one hour every day or a half an hour every day that makes a difference so do you think like in case someone wants to have a side hustle some similar to you yeah like do you think like what are the things that they can pluck out in order to get the particular time for uh, other things because people complain about a lot of lot of things right like we have children we need to find i mean there are a lot of reasons that people complain things people complain about right so uh, one of these beauties of uh, nlp or whatever i'm doing uh, as part of coaching is uh, is exactly what the question you asked uh, why some people are doing that and why some people are not doing that so my way of looking at is uh, if sachin tendulkar can play cricket mm-hmm. 
uh, somebody else also can play cricket. The only thing I think the whole question will now boils down to one thing is whether you are interested, whether you are passionate, whether you have a clear vision, whether you have bigger purpose. So if it is all coming in the right way, I think you will find the answers. But if you are not clear, if you don't have a big vision, if you don't know what exactly you are going to do, then these things, okay, that is not my priority, my child is a priority, uh, my work is a priority, all these things will come up. Right. So, how do you make your sessions ROI focused? Like, what is the kind of procedure you generally structureize or you follow in order to make it ROI focused for a particular session? Right. Uh, so, from a training point of view, to be very honest, it is very difficult to make it ROI focused. But what we do for our advanced training workshops, what we do is uh, we do a pre-training analysis uh, and we kind of analyze and check uh, how a participant is and we do a post-training analysis and there you will see a definite change in the behavior or change in the uh, particular skill set. Okay. However, if you want uh, a concrete uh, method of return on investment, uh, probably you need to do an analysis or the session has to go a little more uh, a bigger duration or a longer duration. So, three months, uh, six months and you do a consistent check on that, okay. then you can find a return on investment. So, in the sense, whenever you go get into training with some particular organization or institution, you actually analyze like Bunch of, I mean, bunch of people, is it? Or all right. So, uh, no, not really. Uh, most of the time, when HR managers contact us, they themselves will do a training need analysis and they come up with uh, programs. Okay. But uh, if it has to be 100% ROI focused and it has to be a, uh, a, a good intervention and since there is a behavioral change you need to see, uh, then definitely uh, a longer duration is required. A pre and a post and a consistent uh, behavioral modification program has to happen in between. Then only you will see that. So, what kind of outcomes do they expect out of this kind of training? Like, how, what are who are all, who are all the clients that can generally come come to you? So, my, uh, my most of my clients are multinational IT companies, say it, uh, Cisco or a Bosch or a Indiva or a Pramadi or things companies like that, or uh, man Indian manufacturing companies. See, most of the time it will be top three issues. One could be a, a communication. Uh, issue or a uh, uh, leadership issue or interpersonal communication. So these are the uh, top three uh, training uh, requests I get uh, most of the time. Other than that, uh, we also get uh, team building and outbound programs or advanced uh, leadership program for uh, managers. Okay, so when it comes to such kind of programs, right? So I have seen, like I have seen, like people undermining such importance of such kind of out, uh, importance of outbound training importance of team building, I mean, the way, the structure of the way, the processes that are involved in team building and such kind of thing. Do you think, I mean, what are the things, why, uh, can you just tell, uh, tell like, why, uh, how do, how do they impact actually? All right, uh, so this is a very, uh very unfortunate that certain companies uh, they don't value the human relation or the team efforts part. Mm. Uh, so what they focus is predominantly on work and delivering to the customer. Right. So now what happens at times is customers send uh, say they send a mail saying that uh, uh, no your team is not working in sync. Uh, you there is a problem in the team. This is not the way team should be. This is not the right leadership and all those things. Then suddenly they realize how can I fix it? Now how can I fix it? Who can fix it? Only trainers or coaches can fix it. Then they reach out to me. So all I am trying to say is manager management is uh, proactive or uh, visionary uh, management. They understand that these are important dynamics uh, in a, a growth of an organization and they have place for training, they have place for coaching, they have place for internal trainers. Then you see a holistic uh, development of management programs. To make it very simple, the big companies in the world, they will have a, definitely have a training and development function because they believe in training. But the small companies or uh, inorganic uh, companies where they are uh, growth was uh, from through various sources they might not put so much of efforts for training okay. right so we need to see the benchmark which are the company the top companies in the world of course they have because not because they are the big companies in the world but because they believe in people and people development so when it comes to so we have even dealt with Indian Navy one of the I mean one of the biggest organizations or one of the where people are almost like top-notch people over there and they are known for their discipline and the way they work right so when it comes to people like them and uh, you have you have even dealt with people who have got some 20 years or 30 years of experience also so at that point of time how do you deal with such kind of people 
Right. So it's a very good question. In fact, uh, the Indian Navy training was a very different experience for me. Uh, it was not challenging as it, but it was very different. Like you said, uh, uh, in the in a common man's world or a civilian's world, they are all perfect people, right? And now, what is a, a thing? Why or why why did I train them or what what was my objective? So I got a request from the captain of the unit saying that I have taken over as a new unit captain and I want to understand people first. There are a lot of issues which I am not able to understand. So we need a training intervention so that uh, people open up, people share things so that we can have a common vision and uh, we work towards that. Mm. So having said that, even if it is uh, the Indian Navy, even if it's a Prime Minister or if it is the Ministers of, of India or anywhere in the world, we all are human beings. We are never perfect. We are not machines that it will work in a perfect way throughout. We are human beings. We might, we might get agitated in the next moment. We might laugh in the uh, next hour, right? So all this, all I'm trying to say, these are human dynamics. So there is no right answer. But uh, to give again, I love cricket. That's why I keep going to cricket example all the time. Somebody was playing test cricket for a long time. He will be playing it in a particular way. Mm. Right. Now the challenges have changed. Now it's 2020. When the first ball you have to hit a six. Mm. So is it possible for a person to uh, groom or change his style of uh, cricketing or style of batting? Yes, it is. So that's the place where trainers and coaches come in. But how much time each person takes might uh, vary. Mm. But if the demand is this, the person has to change, then we have to work. Yeah, that was so when it, whenever you involve in training, right? It's again, you have to make sure the people are engaging. Right? So how do you do that? Because when, after a certain span of time, people lose interest. That's something that really happens. Like, again, it becomes like a classroom kind of program. How do you make sure that that doesn't happen? Right, right. So... Uh, the major difference is that training is a methodology. So there's a process. Training is not about uh, coming onto the stage and it's talking, 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 downloading the information. So training is about uh, uh, a whole process of identifying a need, engaging the people, ensuring they are learning, then evaluating them. So it's a cycle by itself. So purely from an engagement of point of view, there are various methods in which you engage. You can ask questions, you can ask uh, uh, or you can share interesting information, stories, uh, put, give them activities so that they reflect and they find their own answers. All these things are part of it. I do uh, one to two days uh, training workshops, 16 to 18 hours workshops. So I never had engagement problem, uh, not because I'm a great trainer, but I have the right methodologies with me to engage people throughout the training. Can you just give a couple of methodologies like the that you then report? Right. So uh, we follow a very, very simple methodology. First is the uh, warm-up, which is the icebreaker. So any training program, we start off with a, a kind of warm-up or icebreaker. So 15, 20 minutes of we do that. Okay. So people are kind of energized and they're a little curious to know what is it all happening. Okay. Then second method we do is we ask a lot of questions. So when I'm on the stage or when I'm doing a training program, I'm no way assuming uh, that I know everything. I might know that 20 percent, 30 percent, and the rest is my training skills. How I can uh, kind of provoke that thought process, inspire them to take action. So uh, a warm up, a uh, few questions, an activity, their reflection, and then a few more warm ups, then a break. All these things are part of a good training model. So when you're working with senior leaders, they already are people who have got a lot of things. They already have a lot of things that are learned, and they are follow the fixed paths, right? So how do you help them to unlearn that stuff and actually get into the new ways and how, how do you train them to follow the new paths that are actually there in the market right now? Right. Uh, so anything new is uh, uh, kind of uh, people resist change. So anything right. new uh, comes, there is a resistance to that. Uh, but having said that, uh, if a corporate is sending a few leaders for a workshop, that means the corporate has identified there is a need for that. That is why they are in the workshop. That's the first thing. Second is, uh, how much of perfect you are in any field, there is still a scope of improvement is there. More than a scope of improvement, there is a scope of learning if you are interested. So as a trainer, what we usually, any trainer, a good trainer will do is, uh, Get them into the mode of training. Make them aware that you probably don't know so many things. Mm -hmm. So can we not learn together? Mm -hmm. Or we show them the advantage of learning mm -hmm. or the benefits of uh, adding this particular skill set to your kitty. Mm -hmm. So they, these things are the more common methodologies trainers uh, do. 
so that uh, the participant is uh, motivated, inspired. We also, that's uh, probably one reason why many trainers, uh, people like training sessions because there are a lot of appreciation comes in. So appreciation is fact, uh, a great uh, factor in great learning because if you are appreciated, the chances that your mind is open and you are a little excited and you are happy to listen more. So again, I think it's all about a good training methodology and a procedure. So I think we should apply this in our schools and uh, colleges so that students are uh, more interested and excited to learn new things. So where do you think that the present schooling or education system is lacking? So uh, maybe it sounds like a little blunt or rude, but I would say that the, the whole problem starts with teachers. So teachers are not passionate about uh, teaching. Uh, I won't say all teachers, uh, but 80% of teachers are not passionate about teaching. Okay. If you are not passionate about teaching, uh, how will uh, a kid be inspired to learn? So if you are passionate, when I say passionate, it is not about your subject matter, but the, your whole being of uh, being a teacher. Uh, does it give, give you a kick uh, or does it, does it give you happiness? Uh, when you go to the classroom, uh, you, uh, you are energized. I don't see many teachers uh, feeling this way. I think the motivation for many teachers are uh, getting their salary or raising their kids and uh, doing a government job. I think that. So a lot a lot more passion and it is uh, all about root. Uh, I don't know how to change or but when we go and work with teachers, we tell them, the more passionate you are, you see the output. Then what about parents? Do you think they should fall with parenting also? Yes, parenting, uh, there is a problem. Uh, unfortunately, pa parents are clueless. Uh, they uh, get up in the morning, they see a newspaper, they see one child scored uh, 100 out of 100 or got into IIT. Suddenly, they think that uh, my child should be like this. Yeah, so if, I, if you ask me uh, how can I coach a parent, I would definitely say a parent should uh, be a if a parent is an important factor in a child's life or helping him to identify what is that uh, he pa he's passionate about. He might not have a lot of passion initially as his age but a, a, st a good parent should be able to uh, find or help the student or the kid to find what he likes. He might like 10 little things then starts f focusing on one good thing, second thing and asking him to do multiple times. Then you might find another thing but over a period of time you find that okay he has done this particular thing for so many times okay. then naturally you see that if some appreciation comes in some awards some motivation comes in he continues doing that mm -hmm. so parents uh, i think the biggest responsibility is to observe find help them to find the kids what they like and uh, motivating guide them to that path don't you think like it's like ego ah. comes in the way people are i mean ego comes in the way of parenting ego what do you, what do you mean by ego you mean like people are put uh, parents are put parents are trying to fit children into their way their way of putting like. absolutely absolutely that's what i said so these are good the moment uh, father who's an engineer uh, sees a son as an engineer and he becomes an engineer father is so happy everybody is happy he gets a job high paid job he gets married then finally after a point of time you see everything is there but i'm not happy the root cause of or the root of happiness lies in your heart and uh, because you missed your heart for 20 25 years and you see all these big numbers salaries uh, uh, positions uh, you have everything but you're not happy so what what great life is that you are not living a happy life at the end so all i'm all i'm saying is uh, yeah unfortunately that is there in our system uh, can we change it uh, no but we can inspire motivate educate people bring awareness that's all we can do i think everybody should do that i do that some people, uh, some parents hate me, some parents love me, that's part of the game. So again specifically, when it comes to suffering, ha. what is the area of life, your life that you suffered the most? Me, as a person? Yeah. Right, so one of the reasons why I'm uh, very passionate about training and coaching, uh, because I, I, slowly, I strongly believe uh, uh, it started way back in schooling, the college school days. I, w I was not a, a very bright student or an excellent student or a brilliant student. But I, I knew that I was decent enough, but what I missed throughout my life was there was no career guidance, uh, there was no coaching in any form. Uh, so I think if there were those things were taken care at uh, one stage of life, you at least get into a path which is right. So you might reach a destination which you like, but at least you know to get into a path which is right, which is very, very important. It could be anything, it could be arts, it could be sports, it could be engineering, doctor, whatever it is, but you know to get into the path which you like. So, so I think schooling, parents, all, uh, have, all, all of them have to play this role of getting a person and taking into the path. You mean, like, do you think you're continuing your therapy? 
yeah it is all continuing uh, maybe in different forms so i don't have any problems only now i'm looking at solutions so coaching can address a uh, lot of psychometric tests uh, children can attend these days so they can find their inclinations uh, what are many of these international schools or good indian schools they have all these mechanisms uh, in place okay. that is why these days uh, you find uh, kids are average or above average but uh, when it comes to brilliance or excellence uh, i think uh, it is all same it is all same and interestingly you find all great the motivational or inspiring people are from this uh, uh, low background because their mind was so open for learning even after a point our the current generation kids after getting a job or after getting married i think learning is stopped but for others this keeps working inside their mind what can i learn what can i learn so i think that's my answer so who do you think of when you listen to the word success what success what who uh, comes to mind image i think that's a good question i have few role models in my life uh, from public speaking world uh, i like uh, les brown okay. uh, he is one of the best public speakers in the world uh, yeah he is a very entertaining and uh, a lot of insights from his life he gives i, I love to model his style of speaking uh, from a uh success success person of course mahendra singh dhoni is somebody who might admire not for cricket need skills uh, but for yeah, the way he looks into things i think uh, thinking process is same for everybody but the way he looks into things is something uh, different uh there are so many other people but uh, i think uh, from a training world uh, i don't have a particular person but a lot of teachers trainers i kind of listen i only look for uh, trainers who are uh, very passionate about it. you can feel that when they are there they're not talking about theories they are sharing experience they are very passionate about all those trainers inspires me so there are a lot of people uh, there might not be great people but a lot of them so according to you, people people who have met directly face to face among those people whom do you feel is the most successful person uh, whom i have met uh, yeah. in my life yeah uh, that's a that's a difficult thing because probably i am not uh, judged him or how do you define success is a question how it, do you, depends. it depends it on depends person on person to person, person. Yeah. right i think one of the interesting is not a trainer whom i can share a story is uh, uh, this person uh, i met him and he invited me to his house and uh, when i was at uh, his house he asked me uh, or he showed me a picture and uh, asked me can you recognize it i looked at it and i said no oh, he said look again i said no he said look again i said no it was a big picture okay. uh, right then he said uh, this i drew this picture he is a painter okay. he drew this picture sitting in madras christian college for 30 days and for 30 days he was sitting in the college observing each and everything minute things and he was painting and uh, then i asked him uh, uh, why is that uh, you are not uh, keeping it in exhibitions or selling it he said i don't want to prove anyone anything this is my art so i love it for for me that kind of a mindset is of a successful person this is a, here is a great art and uh, you love it but you also know that it is not for the world it is for me yeah so i think that's a probably i can say myself if i coach uh, the best possible personal sports personalities in the world and i don't share in facebook i don't share with anyone finally one day somebody has i'll say yeah i coach mahendra singh dhoni i think that's a, a sign of a successful person yeah i hope i'll reach there then what about coming to belief systems ha huh. so peter thiel has said one of the, i mean the first phase of outside investor he has said like you should be having insane beliefs in order to be either succeed or fail unless you are insane i mean unless you are having insane belief systems you will not be on either side you will huh. be in the middle huh. so coming to belief systems what is that one belief that other people call as insane which uh, i have yeah exactly right uh, i am a person who is highly unconventional uh, so i was talking about the master class how we evolved yeah. bringing uh, three unconventional people every month mm-hmm. so there are a lot of questions asked uh, why why unconventionalism mm-hmm. okay then second is uh, who do you think will come and watch uh, all these things so so far in the last one year we brought around 40 to 45 speakers and an average 30 to 40 uh, people coming and the last event we had 120 people so uh, that that was an insane thing still people might think uh, who will come and listen to an unconventionalism because unconventional people never try to impress the outside world they try to impress themselves True. correct and uh, they talk in their own way but what i realize that they talk from the heart they talk from experiences they went through that experiences are very unique 
and the moment you bring in that unique experiences after experience and you naturally listen to that right because uh, that is the core of every human being right we love to listen to fresh experiences right so i think being unconventionalism and not following the rule rule of a corporate world or a society i think uh, that is something which i love then coming to obsession ah so what so until now what i have learned about you whatever the level you have reached till now yeah. all because of the obsession you had towards training so other than training so what are you obsessed with that's a good question am i obsessed with anything in life uh, other than training or coaching yeah i think uh, meeting new people is a kind of obsession for me uh, i keep on meeting and talking to people in the flights in the train journeys wherever i meet and many people find call it as a networking uh, i don't call it as networking i think it's a very curious state of uh, of a human being uh, i met uh, somebody who works with uh, uh, air force not air force aviation segment okay. and he asked me this question uh, how do you think uh, mukesh ambrani flies mm. of course in a flight but who arranges for flight do you believe travel in a business class will you wait in the airport queue it's an interesting question right, right. then uh, this person who works with the aviation sector gave me the all details uh, there's like a special parking lot for the uh, ambanis of the world and uh, there is a special group organizes the whole thing uh the moment the money's dates are fixed uh, they will walk around on that so the car comes directly to the uh, the place where it is parked and you have one whole flight for you chartered flight then you fly to the other place then you have people there arranging whole trip and so for me this kind of obsession with listening to people and uh, hearing those experiences otherwise how will we know all these things right right so that is very interesting there are so many similar stories i keep listening on the various fields I think probably that's my obsession. Thank you so much for being Thank you so show. much. Yeah, thank you so, so much. So before leaving, so how how can people reach you online? Yeah, okay, my uh, I have three websites. One is uh, www.trainer-alexjacob.in, okay. uh, www.centerforcreativelearning.in, okay. or uh, easiest thing is uh, just Google Alex Jacob Behavioral Trainer. I'm sure you get enough information. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much.